Okay, so in unit two, we did rational exponents, so fraction exponents, and we also did rational expressions, so simplifying, writing restrictions, all of that kind of stuff where you get to cross out all the brackets. So does anyone remember how we switch a root into a rational exponent? What would this look like? Chris? Yeah, so it will be this over what's on the outside, so 6 over 3. And then we have y squared, y to the 1 third, and x. I would simplify, so if you can reduce your fraction at all, you can do that. So I'll simplify this to 2. And then we're just going to use the exponent rules that we reviewed to simplify this. So if I'm dividing two things, I will subtract their exponents. So for x, so I'm going to do 2 minus 1. It's always top minus bottom. And for y, we're going to be doing 2 minus 1 third. So x is pretty easy. That will just simplify to x to the exponent 1. y, I'm going to create a common denominator here. So if this is 2 over 1, it's going to become 6 over 3 minus 1 over 3. And we'll get y to the 5 over 3. If any of those happen to be negative, we would make sure we move it down into the denominator and make it positive. But in this case, we don't have anything that's negative, so we can just leave it as is. How can I check my answers for these ones? How could I double check that this is the equivalent to this? Claire, what do you think? Choose something for x and y. Maybe you choose 2 for x and 3 for y. Sub it into the original. Sub it into the final. Make sure you get out the same answer. If you don't, something went wrong somewhere. If you do, you can be pretty confident that you did the work, the work correctly. Okay? So choose... Oh, did I record or not? Oh, I did. Okay, good. Choose an x and y value. A lot of times with like our rational expressions, this is a good way that we can check the original is the same as our final simplified answer. Um, the only thing that it doesn't tell us is whether we've simplified enough. So if I had two x's that still remained in my final answer that I hadn't combined, but the rest of my work was correct, I might still get an equivalent answer, but I might still have to go further to simplify. So that's the only thing that this check does not tell us is if we've simplified enough. We have to use our common sense to know I have to gather all the x's and I have to gather all the y's together. Okay? Um, simplifying rational expressions, so this is just like a simple already factored example. So the first thing that we do in all multiplication, subtraction, uh, division, uh, and addition questions is we will state, we'll factor or common factor, and if that's already done, then we'll start by stating restrictions. So this is already fully factored. Um, let's start a list of restrictions here. So negative 2, 1, and this creates a restriction of 0. It's always the value of x that makes the expression in the denominator equal to 0. That's what we don't want to happen because we know that is undefined. Um, before you find a common denominator in addition and subtraction questions, you must look at each individual fraction and see if there's anything that could be cancelled. This will actually help you a lot um, and might actually prevent you from getting into something that's like super complex. So we're always going to look in each individual fraction. I'm seeing in the first fraction here that we can cancel x and x before we begin. So then we'll find a common denominator based on that new denominator there. So each side needs what the other side has. So this side will need an x minus 1. We must do to the bottom and the top the same thing. And this side needs an x plus 2. We'll put them together. So you don't write the denominator twice. You're just going to write it once, once you've written it. Um, you're combining into the same fraction, right? They have that common denominator. Write it once. And then you're going to write the tops together. Don't forget the addition sign in between. 
Okay, from here, you want to resist the urge to start canceling at this step. We cannot do this because I'm adding terms. If it was all multiplication on top, that would be okay, but in this case, it's not. So instead, we're going to foil out the top on each side. Big difference here between addition and subtraction is that if this is subtraction, I must leave my expansion of this in brackets and distribute that subtraction into everything in that second expansion. If it's addition, after this step, I can just drop the brackets around that second and first part. Okay, so just be mindful of that. So we're gonna get x squared minus 3x plus 2x minus 6, and then I don't need to keep brackets around this because this is plus. Again, if it was minus, I would keep brackets around that second part until I distribute the negative. So just be careful about that. Okay, gather your like terms on top. So x squared and x squared gives me 2x squared. Negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, minus 2 gives us negative 3. And negative 6 and 1, negative 5. Okay, we reviewed factoring just before this in unit 1. So I would need two things that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3 if this is factorable. Are there two numbers that work for this? Blair? Negative 5 and 2. Negative 5 and 2. So that tells me I can factor. Um, I will review this one more time. So you're going to take your middle term and split it into these two numbers. So I'm going to actually, I'll put the 2 first because that feels like it groups better with the negative 2. And then I'm going to put the negative 5x second. And we're going to do grouping. So 2x, I'm left with x plus 1. Negative 5, I'm left with x plus 1. And I take out that x plus 1, and I'm left with 2x minus 5. We always want to check to see if we can factor that final expression in the numerator, because sometimes we might be able to cancel certain things. Um, in this case, I can't cancel a plus and a minus. These aren't the same, so there's not too much extra that we can do there. But factored form is always simplest form. So if it's asking you to simplify, the factored form of that is your simplest form. And of course, we had our restrictions from above, where we have these three restrictions. Just gonna close this since no one's here. Okay. Multiplying and dividing. Those are the last two couple of things, and then you guys can use the rest of class to continue your review. So, first step always in any question is to factor and common factor the numerators and denominators. In our last question, this was already done, but in this question, it's not. This is a difference of squares. So I'm going to factor this into x plus 4, x minus 4. Multiplies to negative 90 adds to positive 1. Multiplies to negative 90 adds to positive 1. Do you have it? 10 and negative 9. So x plus 10 x minus 9. This is easy factoring because x squared has a coefficient of 1. So you just, as soon as you find the numbers, you can put them right into the brackets. And then we need something that multiplies to positive 40 and adds to 14. This one's easy. Come on, guys. Multiplies to 40, adds to 14. Ella? 10 and 4. I'm also going to do one more thing, which is I would like the x to be first and the 9 to be second. But if I reverse them, I'm going to get negative x plus 9, which I don't really want because we don't really like that x to be negative. So if we reverse these, in order to get this as like x is a positive, I'm actually going to take out a negative from that. and I'm going to write negative x minus 9. You guys can probably see what will happen with that after. But ideally, we'd like x to always be positive and x to be first. So if I take out that negative, then I have a positive x and a negative 9. 
So that's how we're going to factor that one. Restrictions. Positive 9, negative 10, negative 4. Anything that could make the denominators be 0 is what we need to restrict. Okay, and then we can, because this is multiplication and we've gotten everything factored, we can cancel any common brackets between things. So this and this. I can cancel this and this. I can also cancel this and this. So all I'm really left with on the bottom is this negative. Um, if I divide something by negative 1, I can really just write it like this. Like, it just changes the signs of the top. So we'll just write it, the final thing, like this. So that's part of our answer, and that's our final. So last step would be to cancel anything that you can, slash reduce. OK, last one, division. So again, we're going to just quickly common factor and factor everything possible. I'm going to gather up this x minus 10 into brackets just to show that it's a grouping. Before I flip and multiply for division, I'm going to make sure I factor and restrict. So we're going to factor, common factor, anything we can. We will restrict. Then we will flip and multiply the second fraction. Then we will restrict again. Then we can cancel and reduce anything. OK, so multiplies to negative 56 adds to positive 1. I believe that would be 8 and negative 7. And then multiplies to negative 80 adds to negative 2. Should be negative 10 and positive 8. Restrictions, x cannot equal 10 and negative 8. Then we'll flip and multiply. So you only flip the second fraction when you flip and multiply. The first fraction will stay as is. And when I do that, I now have new expressions in the denominator that must be restricted. So this already is restricted, negative 8. But this one has a new restriction of 7 that I must add to my list. So we're now at number 4. We just finished restricting one more time on the bottom. Now that we have multiplication, I can cancel anything on a top with anything on a bottom. In order to cross cancel, I must have multiplication in between here. If I have addition or subtraction or division, there's no cross canceling allowed. Only to the top and bottom of the fraction could I cancel. So I can cancel these, and I can cancel these, and I'm left with 1 over x minus 7. And that will be part of my answer as well. All right, so only extra thing with division is we have to do that extra step of restricting our new bottom after we flip and multiply. Otherwise, it's very similar to multiplication. OK? So I'll leave it there. You guys can use your last few minutes. Uh, I mean, you have like 35 minutes to continue working in your packages. That's your quick recap of units one and two. And I'll post these videos to Edsby for you guys if you need them.